The Discovery of Water on the Moon According to a NASA press release this week, the argument that the moon is a dry, desolate place no longer holds water. Substantial water reserves have been found beneath the moon's surface, paving the way for a permanent lunar base. Preliminary data from the Lunar Crater Observation and Sensing Satellite, or LCROSS, indicates that the mission successfully uncovered water during the October 9, 2009 impacts into the permanently shattered region of Cabeus Crater near the moon's south pole. This discovery opens a new chapter in our understanding of the moon. The impact created by the LCROSS Centaur upper stage rocket created a two-part plume of material from the bottom of the crater. The first part was a high-angle plume of vapor and fine dust, and the second, a lower angle, eject a curtain of heavier material. This material has not seen sunlight in billions of years. After traveling approximately 113 days and nearly 5.6 million miles, or 9 million kilometers, the Centaur and Elcross separated on a final approach to the moon. Traveling as fast as a speeding bullet, the Centaur impacted the lunar surface with LCROSS watching with its onboard instruments. Approximately four minutes of data was collected before the LCROSS itself impacted the lunar surface. However, the impact was barely discernible and for several hours NASA was unable to confirm that a plume had been detected at all after having initially said that it would be visible through handheld telescopes from Earth. NASA later said that LCROSS did indeed photograph a plume, but that the live video stream was not properly attuned to pick out the details. Vincent Eek from the University of Durham, who helped the American Space Agency pick the location, said that the much smaller plume may have been a result of the large quantities of water. A high proportion of the capsule's energy on impact would have gone into vaporizing the ice, meaning there was less energy left to kick the dust up to high altitudes. Scientists are now hoping to establish the origin of the water. One possibility is that it was deposited by comets over as long as billions of years, meaning it could hold important clues to the history of the solar system. The discovery was announced by project scientists Anthony Colapreet at a midday news conference. I'm here to tell you that indeed, yes, we found water. And we didn't just find a little bit. We found a significant amount. About a dozen two-gallon bucketfuls, he said, holding up several white plastic containers. The exact form of the water is not yet clear, but it is likely to be spread out in small ice crystals. The moon remains drier than any desert on Earth, but the water is said to exist on the moon in very small quantities. One ton of the top layer of the lunar surface could hold about 32 ounces of water, researchers said. Finding water on the moon would be a boon to possible future lunar bases, acting as a potential source of both drinking water and fuel. Lunar ice, if bountiful, not only gives future settlers something to drink, but could also be broken apart into oxygen and hydrogen. Both are valuable as rocket fuel, and the oxygen would also give astronauts air to breathe. NASA's current exploration plans call for a return of astronauts to the moon by 2020 for the first visit since 1972. Michael Warko, chief lunar scientist at NASA headquarters in Washington, said the latest discovery could also unlock the mysteries of the solar system. He listed several options as sources for the water, including comet, solar wind, giant molecular clouds, or even the moon itself through some kind of internal activity. If the water that was formed or deposited is billions of years old, these polar cold traps could hold a key to the history and evolution of the solar system, much as an ice core sample taken on Earth reveals ancient data. In addition, water and other compounds represent potential resources that could sustain future lunar exploration. Gregory DeLore of the University of California, Berkeley, said the findings of Elcross and other spacecraft were painting a really surprising new picture of the moon. Rather than a dead and unchanging world, it could be, in fact, a very dynamic and interesting one. When Apollo astronauts returned from the moon 40 years ago, they brought back several samples of lunar rocks. The moon rocks were analyzed for signs of water found to minerals present in the rocks. While trace amounts of water were detected, they were assumed to be contamination from Earth because the containers the rock came back in had leaked. Analysis of the dust thrown up from the Elcross impact revealed the presence of about 80 liters of water, 
or enough for a shallow bath. The results suggest that much larger, more accessible reserves are available at the poles. Scientists have long speculated about the source of vast quantities of hydrogen that have been observed at the lunar poles. The findings are shedding new light on the question of water, which could be more widespread and in greater quantity than previously suspected. Since the impact, the l -Cross science team has been working almost nonstop analyzing the huge amount of data the spacecraft collected. The team concentrated on data from the satellite spectrometers, which provide the most definitive information about the presence of water. A spectrometer examines light emitted or absorbed by materials and helps identify their composition. We were only able to match the spectra from l -Cross data when we inserted the spectra for water, said Colapreet. No other reasonable combination of other compounds that we tried matched the observations. The possibility of contamination from the centaur was also ruled out. There are potentially two types of water on the moon. That brought from outside sources, such as water-bearing comets striking the surface, or that which originates on the moon. A second endogenic source is thought to possibly come from the interaction of the solar wind with moon rocks and soil. The rocks and regolith that make up the lunar surface are about 45% oxygen. The solar wind, the constant stream of charged particles emitted by the sun, are mostly protons or positively charged hydrogen atoms. If the charged hydrogens, which are traveling at one-third the speed of light, hit the lunar surface with enough force, they break apart oxygen bonds and soil materials. Where free oxygen and hydrogen exist, there is a high chance that trace amounts of water will form. The various study researchers also suggest that the daily dehydration and rehydration of trace water across the surface could lead to migration toward the poles, where it can accumulate in the cold traps of permanently shadowed regions. The Elcross science team, along with colleagues, are poring over the data to understand the entire impact event from flash to crater, with the final goal being the understanding of the distribution of materials, and in particular, volatiles, within the soil at the impact site. The full understanding of the data may take some time. The data is that rich, said Colapreet. Along with the water and cabious, there are hints of other intriguing substances. The permanently shadowed regions of the moon are truly cold traps, collecting and preserving material over billions of years. l -Cross was launched in June of 2009 as a companion mission to the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, or LRO, from NASA's Kennedy Space Center. After separating from LRO, the l -Cross spacecraft held on to the spent Centaur upper stage rocket of the launch vehicle, executed a lunar swing by, and entered into a series of long looping orbits around the Earth. LRO continues to make passes over the impact site to give the l -Cross team additional insight into the mechanics of the impact and its resulting craters. What other secrets will the moon reveal? Stay tuned! This is Rita Carl, Director of Education for Challenger Center for Space Science Education, signing off.